Hi everyone, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and I'm excited to share with you our Polypad updates for November 2023. I'm going to start in the polygons and shapes category and drag out a custom polygon. You may know on the custom polygon, if you click and drag on a vertex, you can change the shape of the custom polygon. If you click on an edge, you can add a vertex at that spot. So here I'm clicking to add a number of vertices. And if you click on a vertex, it will become deleted. So you can make all sorts of custom polygons that you like. However, sometimes you might just want students to say, explore a triangle. So you as a teacher or an author might want to start with only three vertices and only have students move around the uh, vertices of the triangle. And so what happens sometimes is students could click here by accident to add a fourth vertex to make it a quadrilateral. Well, we now have added the option to turn off the ability to add and delete a vertex on the custom polygon. So let me show you that. I'm going to go to the File tab, go into Authoring mode. Uh, I'll go just to an original custom polygon to show you it from the start. It would work on that one as well. But I go into More Tools. And you can see in authoring mode, I have this toggle called add or delete vertices. If I go outside of authoring mode, that is not available. That toggle is not there. Inside of authoring mode, I can turn off that toggle, leave authoring mode. And now you can see I can move these around. But when I try to click here, I'm not getting a vertex. Or if I click on that one, I can't delete it. Inside of authoring mode, I could delete them, or I could turn this, this toggle back on. I could delete these, maybe to make it a triangle, turn that off, go out of authoring mode, and now I only have a triangle. If you are using Polypad inside of Activity Builder in Desmos Classroom, you may know that only you as a teacher have the uh, have the option to change things in authoring mode when students are engaging in an, in an activity at student.desmos.com inside of Activity Builder. They don't have access to this authoring mode toggle, so they couldn't turn it on to then be able to add vertices. So a nice benefit of using Polypad inside of Activity Builder. Okay, let me continue with the updates here. We added a new way to evaluate equations. So I'm going to add an equation here at the bottom. And I'll just write 14 plus 7. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. And now when I, I click on the equation, an evaluate option appears in the action bar. It used to be a toggle inside the More Tools menu. Now it's just a button you click to evaluate that equation. And when I click it, I see that it uh, adds the equal sign and the evaluated expression to the right of the equation. It used to be underneath it right here. Now 14 plus 7 equals 21. And if I go in here and change it, 14 plus 10, that answer goes away. I click Evaluate again to see the answer. You as an author can turn off this option for students to evaluate equations inside of authoring mode. So you go inside of authoring mode, click on an equation, go to Action Visibility, and turn off, well, so here, because I've already evaluated this equation, I don't have the option to turn off evaluate. But I'll show you that if I add a new equation, 7 plus 2, I'm in authoring mode here. Now you can see evaluate appears because that's an option on this equation. So I can turn off evaluate. If I change this one to, say, 14 plus 9, now evaluate's going to appear inside of the action visibility because that's an option on this tile. To learn more about authoring mode, you can click this link right here and get a deep dive into authoring mode. But now when I go out of authoring mode, I can see that that option to evaluate the equation is not there. I'm going to turn it back on because I want to show you a new feature we added to evaluate. I click evaluate, I get 9, and I evaluate this, and I get 23. But if this was 7, say, plus 2 thirds, and I click evaluate, it, it uh, evaluates as, as an improper fraction, 23 over 3. But I can change that under the More Tools menu. So I can change this to a decimal or a mixed number. So all of those options appear under Evaluation Output. And again, you can turn that on or off inside of authoring mode, depending on what you want your students to have access to. 
Okay, two last updates. One involving bar graphs. So let me just add a bunch of coins onto the canvas. I'll zoom out a little bit. Let me just get 10 of them really quickly. There's two, three, four, five. I was using the C button to copy them really quickly. There's 10. I'm going to toss all these coins. And then I'm going to click tabulate to get a table of values. And then I'm going to click a column chart and just drag it over here to get a chart of the values. So there we go. There is my uh, table and chart of the coins that I'm tossing. Uh, the new feature, this is not new in, in November. The new feature is the ability to change the color of a single bar in a chart. So I would like this heads column to be blue to match up on the coins here. I'm going to double click on it and go to the color picker and make that blue. So now that looks much nicer to me as I'm doing a chart of heads and tails. Of course, I could change this one as well if I wanted to, to purple or something, but I'll go back and keep it red. All right, so that's just uh, the ability to change the color of an individual bar in a bar graph. The final thing is a new uh, type of button, a new type of action button that we've added. So in October 2023, we added a way to add a number of action buttons to the canvas to play a, a polygon to play a fraction bar to roll a dice to hide something to show it so go go check out that video from october to learn more i'll put a link in the comments here but the new feature we added is the ability to have a zoom button so let's let me just show this with a quick example here i'm going to put a um, just like a rectangle on the canvas and so i want to make a button to zoom in and out on this rectangle so I'm going to turn on authoring mode. I'll go to the more tools menu and I'm going to open the authoring section and click on action button. And you can see here, I have a number of options in this action button. So this button is connected to this rectangle. So I could set it to toggle and you can test a button. That's going to change the button from uh, hidden to visible inside of authoring mode, a, a hidden tile, you can still see it when it's kind of transparent. If I go out of authoring mode and I do toggle here, you can see it's going back and forth. That's not new. So all of these options were here in October, toggle, flash, hide, show, play. What's new is the navigate button. And when I click on, on navigate, it's going to zoom in on that tile. So uh, first what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color of this button. Let me just make it a gray. I'm going to go to the More Tools menu. And you can see there's this option now on buttons to have an icon instead of the word. So we've attached a number uh, of icons to all of these buttons. And so for Navigate, if I do Show Icon, it's a magnifying glass. And now when I click Test, I can test this button. It's going to zoom in on that rectangle. Awesome. But when I click the button again, it's zooming in again, but I don't notice it because I'm already zoomed in. So if I were to go here and zoom out, and now I'll just do it outside of authoring mode, I zoom in. When I click it, nothing happens again because I've already zoomed in, which might be fine for the activity that you're making, but maybe you want to have the ability to zoom in and zoom out. So now let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go into authoring mode, click on this button, go to the More Tools menu, and see this toggle. Of, of alternate zoom. So with that, by turning on this toggle, that's going to make this button a zoom in and then a zoom out button. So now when I go out of authoring mode, I zoom in. Oh, so that was zoom out. I was already zoomed in, so then it zoomed out. And when you zoom out, it's going to show you the entire canvas. So here I could zoom in to see what's going on here, and then this nice action of zoom out. So this is just showing the entire canvas that I have built here. But let's say I wanted to delete on all of those. And let me just show you a, um, a use case for zoom in and zoom out. Let's say I have a number of problems or questions on the canvas, and I want to be able to zoom in and zoom out on each of those questions. So on this one here, I could add an action button again. There's my button. Let me make it gray. 
Uh, I'll put it over here. I'm going to make this navigate. I want to turn on the icon and the alternate zoom and then move it over here so it's sort of in the same spot. I'll go out of authoring mode. And so let's say this is, is my starting canvas. I could zoom in here and I could work on this question. I could add a text box of the question or an equation or something. I can zoom out and then I could zoom in here and keep going back and forth. So a really nice way to use the zoom button to focus on different parts of the canvas. Wonderful, those are our November uh, 2023 updates. Thanks for watching. I will put a link in the comments of this video to our October Polypad updates, which shows you how to use all of the options in the buttons. Um, and if you wanna learn more about authoring mode, which I talked a little bit about in this video, you can click this button right here. I talked a little bit about using Polypad inside of Activity Builder. We have a whole tutorial page on that as well which I will link in the comments also. Thanks very much.